We're Grant and Teresa Boggs, and we're on a mission to visit every winery in the Napa Valley. Yes, all 450 plus of them and counting. Along the way, we'll share with you our favorite places to eat, drink, and play in wine country. Let's do it. Today, we're visiting the number one most Instagram vineyard in the world. And when you see it, you'll understand why. I mean, how many of us have dreamed of visiting and exploring a castle? Well, today's the day our dreams come true, and we don't need a passport to do it. We're headed to Castello di Amorosa. It's a 13th century style castle and winery right here in the Napa Valley. And we're sharing our top three tips for visiting Castello di Amorosa. But first, when I say this is a castle, I mean it's a real castle with a drawbridge, a moat, and a massive wine cellar. This is wine country after all. If you check out all the Instagram posts with the hashtag Castello di Amorosa, you'll see thousands of pictures of the beautiful grounds, people wearing their best wine country outfits, and yep, even people proposing. Building a Tuscan castle in the Napa Valley was no small feat. It was built by Dario Satui, who's a fourth generation winemaker and owner of V. Satui. You can check out our video on that winery here. The castle was built over a 15 year period using handmade bricks and other building material imported from Europe. The attention to detail really shows, from the antique doors to the beautifully hand-painted frescoes. But Castello di Amorosa isn't just a showpiece, it's a working winery, producing wine from its 30-acre estate and other vineyards around the valley. They grow everything from Cabernet Sauvignon and Sangiovese to Primitivo and Petit Verdot. So now for our three tips. Tip number one, you need a tasting or tour reservation just to get through the front gates. So just go on their website and book your tasting or tour. Tasting fees range from $50 per person for a standing tasting up to $95 for a cheese and charcuterie pairing with a guided tour. Also know that there's an admission fee for kids between two and 20 years old and it's $25. Obviously they're not legally old enough to taste, but they still have to pay to get in. And for those of you with younger kids, they don't allow strollers in the castle, but they are fully ADA compliant if you or someone in your party has a wheelchair. Tip number two, attire. So what do you wear to a castle? Comfortable shoes, of course. The castle is 136,000 square feet. You can't access all of it without a guided tour, but still, you'll probably do a fair bit of exploring on your own. There are a lot of staircases and cobblestone walkways. So if you want to take pictures wearing really high heels or something, maybe pack comfy shoes in a tote bag and just change into your heels for the picture. It can also be quite chilly in the tasting room cellar, so bring a light sweater or jacket if you have a tendency to get cold, like me. Tip number three is about the wine. If you taste a wine and like it, buy it. Castello di Amorosa wine isn't sold anywhere else. If you're traveling, you can buy wine on site and get it shipped. Now, if you love the wine and want to make sure you get it year round, you can sign up for their free shipping club. There's no membership fee, you just pay for the wine itself. So those are our three tips. Whether you come for the architecture, the views, or the wine, Castello di Amorosa should definitely be on your list. And if you'd like to learn more about other wineries in the area, check out our playlist of winery videos as Grant and I continue our quest to visit every winery in the Napa Valley. Cheers.